45 arrests, the biggest drug operation in U.S. history, in prison, ravaged by addiction, but on a cold jail cell floor. My guests found the unfair advantage. Next. My guest, Robbie Eddy, was arrested 45 times, then indicted for partnering in a $30 million illegal pain pill operation. Out of control, enslaved to drugs, should have died with five overdoses, facing 25 years in federal prison for racketeering, mail, and wire fraud. <sighs> Robbie, how's a, a, a nice Catholic man coming from a good family get into such a mess? Well, man, I started, uh, you know, I, my, my dad was a, a military guy, Golden Glove boxer. I was raised by really good mom and dad. I mean, all that was fine. I like to always share that because it doesn't matter what kind of upbringing. You can have a bad upbringing or a good upbringing. Once, once the enemy gets a hold of you, with, that, with whatever stronghold that you have in your life, it's over with. So I was counting on this football scholarship. I had a 75% scholarship. My parents couldn't afford the other 25%. I played football my whole life. It's all I knew. It's all, I didn't know anything else. I wasn't good in school. So when I didn't go play college football, I didn't do very good in school and I didn't know what I was gonna be, so I literally I started picking up him. alcohol and drugs at that time. And, and from that point on, man, the, uh, it, it, it just was, it was fast, it was really fast. And this obsession took over me quick, and um, you know, I started breaking the law. I just, I just turned into a completely different person. It was like Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde. Now, just before you got that big yeah. federal indictment, uh, you're in jail on previous crimes, uh, and you're, how do you get high in jail? You can't um, get drugs in jail. Oh man, there's, if you, anybody who's been to prison or been to jail before, you'd be surprised. There's more drugs and alcohol in prisons and jails than there is on the street. It's, it's, it's pretty nuts. Okay, it's your birthday. Yeah. You're in jail. Yeah. And boy, did you get an amazing birthday gift. Tell me about that gift. So when I hit, it was on March 25th, 2011, and um, which is coming up 11 years. When I was standing there in the jail cell, and, and it hit me, I, I was mentally, physically, spiritually bankrupt. My, I, I just got off the phone I, with my father. Yeah, my father listen, said, son, listen, I, can't I can't stop you from killing yourself, but I can but stop I can't you from stop killing your mother. Killing We're done. Sorry. I was just in so much pain, so much anguish after my father telling me that. I was completely just broken. And when, and when you're broken and you're beaten down bad enough, and you cry out to God, I had anguish, true anguish, which anguish is sorrow and deep pain. And out of that burst passion. So I had this anguish because I was just in so much pain and I cried out to God. It wasn't, it wasn't, it was for real. All the other times it was God, like foxhole prayers. <laughs> this real. was real, it was from my heart and soul. And I cried out to God. And the obsession to drink or drug was lifted me. I, I felt the presence of God. I felt him saying to me, have you had enough? It was just like that. And I dropped to my knees and yes, I started God. crying like a baby. Yes. What happened to your addiction? It was lifted from me immediately. It was snatched right out of me. Super did you natural. ask him to take it away? I did. I said, Father God, please take this from me. If there's a God, I didn't even know. I didn't even know. I didn't even know if there was a real God. I didn't believe in Jesus. I said, if you're real and you're out there, please take this from me. Please help me. But the thing I don't understand is he sets you supernaturally free from impossible years of ravaging your body and addiction. Instantly, he, he sets you free and you still don't believe in Jesus. Yeah, that's how, the, the thing is about God was so powerful and that at that time is when the unfair advantage anointing hit me. That's when it hit me. Yes, God. And, and even God, God yes. doesn't love us for who we are. He loves us for who we're gonna be. So he knew, hmm. he knew exactly. We're not, you know, he knows who we are, but we're in the womb. He already knows, it was planned. He knew exactly what was gonna happen to me and that's why. When I, when I got out of jail and I didn't know Jesus yet, but I, I hit my knees and, and the anointing fell on me and God was there for me already. When I got out, uh, after being, I got indicted, I got indicted 20 days later by the FBI, but I still didn't find Jesus until after I got out of federal prison. So I went to federal prison, and as in, pre in federal prison, 
you know, God continued to follow me all through that out there. I was supernaturally taken out of prison years earlier. I was sentenced 25 years. I didn't get snatched out of prison. It's impossible for that, but I didn't pray for it. I didn't go to law library. The power of God, the glory of God snatched me out of prison. That's the only way it could probably, it was supernatural. Now, when I got out of prison, I still didn't, at a federal prison, I still didn't know Jesus. That's when my wife, I went the first time with her. She said, let's go to church. I, I was gonna go just to, you know, my wife's going, let me support her, I go. And as I'm there, they're passing baskets and doing their door and all that stuff. And I'm like, man, I'm, 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 I'm out of here. And as I was walking outside, a voice said to me, don't miss the beauty of the forest because of some of the ugliness of its trees. And I said, wow, and it hit me hard. I felt, I felt God's presence. So I came back the next, the next weekend. And that next weekend is when, I, is when I accepted Jesus, Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior. Stand and up. literally, you know, learned the seed principle. What's the seed principle? Well, to me, the seed principle is huge to me. It's tithing, tithing, giving. You know, it's, it's all of God. And this unfair advantage is the, is the whole Bible. It's not some of it. It's not the New Testament. It's the Old Testament, the New Testament. It's the Word of God. And when you stand on God's Word, all of it, the, the, the anointing will fall on you. You get this unfair advantage. So I learned right away, tithing is huge to me because when you give God your money, you're giving God your heart. So you're trusting God because a man who gives God his money is, is saying, I trust you, God. It's because money had been a stronghold for you. And when you found out the law of sowing and reaping, you took to it like a duck to water. 100%. And like God says, he says, with the, many, with the enemy meant for evil, he will turn to good. And that's exactly what he did. He took the same thing, what the enemy meant to take me down, and use it. And I've used that in my life now. Okay. They gave an altar call at the service. What happened? Uh, at this altar, I, I stood up. They asked me if I wanted to if I wanted Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior, I did. I grabbed the piece of paper. I call it tipping God. I wasn't tithing yet. I pulled out a little bit of I pulled out a little bit of money. I put it inside the thing and said, bring the full tithe into the storehouse and I will not open up the win windows of heaven for you and pour blessings. You can't contain them. Test me. And it was the only spot that God was saying to test him. I, I tested him. And I'll tell you what, and at this time, that's how graceful and how powerful God is. And how to me, tithing is a thing. I watch tithing quadruple my income. Tithing is not a money thing, it's a spiritual thing. And God showed me that. Now, all right. Jesus is definitely your Lord now. You get <laughs> filled with the Holy Spirit. What was that like? Honestly, when I got filled with the Holy Spirit, that changed my whole entire life. Um, it, it, it went from like, I, I call it not, not, a, not, a, not a weak Christian, but I didn't have a boldness. When I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, and the fire rain upon me. I was crying my eyes out, bawling, and I felt fire all over me. That immediately from that day on, and I spoke in tongues the very first time, I, I prayed in tongues, and from that day on is when the powerful stuff happened. It's the same thing with Jesus. When Jesus got baptized in water, he was right there with John. After that, the dove came down. He got baptized in the Holy Ghost, and that's when his ministry started. That's when he started casting out devils, raising the dead, healed the sick. You know. I am so amazed when I watch you of the transformation that has occurred in your life, Robbie. It is, they used to say that about me, but I was nothing compared to what you are right now. Still facing a potential of 25 years in federal prison. Good time for the unfair advantage to explode in his life. You're about to find out how outrageously unfair it really is. And even better, Robbie will impart the outrageously unfair advantage to you when we return. We will be right back to It's Supernatural. Okay, guys, hear me out. I want to tell you what God's unfair advantage anointing truly is. I received the unfair advantage anointing on the cold floor of my jail cell. I was immediately delivered from drug addiction. I immediately experienced God's divine favor. God reduced my federal prison sentence from 25 years to two years. I had four DUIs, which meant in the natural, I would never have a driver's license again. It was taken for the rest of my life. God supernaturally provided a driver's license. I started an air conditioning company. Today, God has provided me with over 23 trucks. Last year, my, my company did over $5 million. Through God's unfair advantage anointing, I can pray for the sick 
and cast out devils, just like Jesus said we could. Anxiety, depression, anything goes. If you want to receive God's unfair advantage anointing, do, do like Moses. He lived as a prince wearing the finest of clothes. Then for 40 years, he was in Egypt and became a shepherd. God appeared before him in a burning bush. God told Moses he wanted him to go back to Egypt and tell Pharaoh to let the children of Israel go free. Moses told God, I can't. I can't do that. I can't even talk right. I stutter. I'm just an ordinary man. God told Moses, throw down his shepherd's staff down onto the ground. That, that, that rod became a snake. God told Moses to pick it up again. The rod became a staff again. Moses' staff was transformed into being the rod of God. Moses received the unfair advantage anointing. But you see, with God's unfair advantage anointing, Moses parted the Red Sea and delivered the children from Egypt. God gave me the resources to help you guys get this thing. My book, the 40 day devotional, plus an audio CD, where I can part the unfair advantage anointing onto you. You can have divine health, supernatural provision, boldness like Apostle Paul. You can face others, pray for the sick, cast out devils, and raise the dead. Don't miss out on getting Robbie Eddy's powerful must-read book, The Unfair Advantage, and his anointed 40-day devotional, The Unfair Advantage, Your Journey to Supernatural Power and Freedom. You'll also get his audio CD teaching, Receiving the Unfair Advantage Anointing. Plus, you'll receive the Unfair Advantage wristband. This is an exclusive offer for our It's Supernatural audience. We now return to It's Supernatural. Robbie, all the way back when you were in that jail cell, you received an anointing of the unfair advantage. Would you define, in fact, look in the camera and tell the people what the unfair advantage is. The unfair advantage is completely giving yourself to God, surrendering yourself, and being obedient to God's Word completely. And when you get this unfair advantage, the, the unfair advantage is an anointing, and the anointing breaks the yoke. I feel like there's someone right now watching this show that feels like they don't have the boldness. They don't, have the, they don't feel worthy, worthy enough for God. God is yearning for you. He wants you. All you got to do is praise. Open your arms and seek Him, and you will find Him. Give me a biblical example of the unfair advantage. Moses, Moses was a normal guy, just like all of us. And when he picked up that rod, or the snake that became the rod, the rod of God, that became an unfair advantage anointing. He literally cracked the rock and water was coming out of it. And then you can tell that it's transferable because he gave it to Aaron, Aaron took it when it was transferred and then went to the river and turned it to blood. That right there shows that even back then they had an unfair advantage. Wait till you see what happens with the unfair advantage to Robbie because it's about ready to happen to you, especially when he prays for you. Um, uh, Robbie, you're facing 25 years in prison, but it got reduced and reduced and reduced <laughs> to what? To uh, five years. I got, I got, the, I had a 25 year sentence with the, and was what I was getting, what I was facing. The federal prosecutors said that they were gonna give me 10 years, and that's lenient due to my, my extensive criminal history. And they were right, they were 100% right. And the judge, this is supernatural right here, a federal judge, judges listen to prosecutors, they don't, they don't do anything different. The, the federal judge sentenced me to five years under all of them, that never happens. So right there was a, the first, one of the first supernatural things that happens to that, and, and, and they give me 90 days to turn myself in. And, and then they give me 90 days to turn myself in. During that time, I continued to seek God. I didn't stop. I kept seeking Him, seeking Him no matter what, because the obsession to drink or drug was lifted from me. It was gone. Never, and it has never returned, as a matter of fact, to this day, period. It's gone. And as I went into prison, instead of going in there, I was mentally and physically, spiritually in good shape, but I told myself, I'm going in this place and I'm coming out better. And when I went in there, I started helping people. I started moving. I was, I was mentoring people. I was bringing people to God. And I still didn't even have Yeshua yet. If things get powerful later at that. As I'm in there, that's exactly what happened. And out of nowhere, nowhere they say, John Eddie, you got legal mail. Now, this guy, my caseworker, he loved Jesus. Now, at this time, I was scared of you. You talked about Jesus, I might have gotten a fight with you, man. I just wasn't there. I had the veil over my eyes, you know? I had, he had me. This guy had Jesus everywhere. And he said, you know what? He goes, there's a different man than I'm looking at right now in this paper. There's a completely different man from this book. He had my whole, everything I've been through. 
This is All of a sudden they said, you got legal mail. It was from the judge. judge that cut my my time from five years, three years to three years. He read it with me and the guy started weeping. And after he said that, he goes, that's not even else. I just got a thing on my desk today that said you get another year off. So I did two years on a 25 year sentence. Only God can do that. That's the unfair advantage. Okay, yeah, yeah, out of prison. And that did stop the unfair advantage from it being increasing. <laughs> well, I wanna, I wanna share this real fast. I lost my driver's license for the rest of my life. I got that back. I was, a, I was, a, I have 45 arrests and two, and been, a, and been a prison twice. I'm, and I have a contractor's license, the highest air conditioning contractor's license you can probably get. Only God can do that. <laughs> this, now, I see so many people with the wrong motivation in giving. They give to get. Yeah. You give because you love God. Yeah. Is that a fair assessment? 100%. Man. Oh, okay. You are literally told many times who to give, the name of the person, the amount of money, yeah. when to give. Yeah. Give me one example. I'll give you an example. I was at this place. I saw, um, the Lord gave me the spirit of discernment. We all have it. These things are in the Bible. You know, that's one of my big gifts. I was a discerning this lady. She looked really sad and down, and I could tell that she was hurting financially. And I'm in this. I'm in this building. Before I walked up to her, the Holy Spirit said, "Pay two months of her rent." Exact number. I walked up to this lady after, and I said, "Hey, how are you doing?" She goes, "Oh, hi, Rob." She she's heard me before. She goes, "I go, are you guys doing all right? You hurt here?" She goes, "Yeah, it's just we're hurting ever since COVID. We were hurting, but." but financially bad right now. She was like, it's just two months. If we could just get two months. And my heart started pounding, so I went out to my truck. I found out what she pays monthly, and I wrote her a check, and, and I closed it. And she didn't realize what it was. And she just said, can you, can you just come here and come help, here and you know, help. this place a little bit? I said, I'm, I'm, right I'm, now, I'm, I'm too busy to come to that, but I hope that helps you. Me. And she didn't realize what it was, and she opened it up, and she started to weep and cry. And she said, thank you. I go, don't thank me. You thank Jesus. You thank God, because he's the one who told you to give you that. And she hugged me and she started weeping and crying, man. And these, happens, these things happen all the time, all week long. Not just in this area, it's God blessing him, but because money doesn't have him, God has entrusted him with money. Yes. He went in an air conditioning business yeah. where at one point he couldn't even get a driver's license. <laughs> uh, he went from four trucks in a three-year period span yeah. to 23 trucks, yeah. and he grew to $5 million yeah. a year business. Hallelujah. <laughs> only God, <laughs> only the unfair. Oh my God, that's an unfair advantage, man. Yeah. I mean, you're minding your own business, uh, you're taking a shower, and God tells you to do something, and he doesn't even know what the word means. What did he tell you to do? When I'm sitting in that shower, see God, the spirit of the Lord is upon me. So when people ask me to do something, I do. If God tells me to move, I move. All right. So when I'm in this in this shower, because someone called, I got prophesied over at my church three weeks that you're going to go somewhere with your wife and it's going to be all muddy and dirty. We walk at this place and it was about my book. Someone asked me, hey, come up here and share. It wasn't, I didn't want no money or nothing. If God tells me to move, I move. I've been blessed with a big air conditioning company. I go. So I go up there to, 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 to pass on this testimony because we overcame him by the blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony. So I go in this place and, I, and as I'm in the shower getting scared because I got to talk in front of all these people, I'm nervous. All of a sudden, I get, the Lord tells me, you need to do an altar call. I didn't even know what it was. <laughs> I, never, I never even, I never even, I never even, been, I had no idea what it even was. And then I, my heart starts beating more because I knew I had to do it. I'm going to obey you God. You thought you'd become a carpenter and build <laughs> altars. That's an altar call. Yeah. So, and that's how God uses normal people. So my wife walks in and goes, as she, I'm in the shower. She can't see me. She goes, honey, you need to do an altar call. The Holy Spirit just told me. Man, my heart starts pounding. I go, I didn't even say anything to her. When I shared about my story up there at the end, I called everybody, come, uh, come up here for an altar call if you want to pray. And it was all dead silent. I walked back to my chair and one guy stood up and he walked over. He started playing the guitar and they started playing music and the Holy Spirit's presence just came in strong, man. I almost started weeping because that happens to me a lot when the Holy Spirit comes around. Sure enough, I go up there and people just start, he goes, he said, dude, let's do an altar call. Let's do one. I found out later, they never even done one there. It didn't lie. <laughs> It, 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 like, no wonder your wife and yeah. God had to <laughs> So it, people lined up. The whole church lined up outside, and Jesus baptized 10 people in the Holy Spirit. Nine of them prayed in tongues. People were healed. Yeshua moved. Do greater things than Jesus. 
I, I'll tell you what, you could go on and on and on on this unfair advantage, but tell me a little bit very quickly about uh, your mother and your father. So my mom and my dad, I, uh, you know, they were, they were believers, but my dad was uh, Catholic and they had a little bit of spirit of religion on them, you know? But my dad, you know, the shoes of peace are the gospel. I've been able to walk and I've been able to minister and let my feet do the talking. And it's changed, people's lives have changed just by watching my actions, you know, because that's, that's one of the unfair advantages, anointing your actions. You're not just running your mouth, your feet's showing you the way you're living. Anyone can, can run their mouth. So sure enough, my dad calls me. My dad, has, my dad has shingles and he's about to lose his eye, all right, from shingles. My mom has, my mom has uh, anxiety for literally 20 years. We're at point, point she can't even leave the house in anxiety and depression. My dad says, something's telling me to come to your office, Robbie, because my office is just anointed. Jesus is everywhere, man. He, you right, know, we've yeah. prayed over people. We've anointed the doors. Like, we bring right. bread. We, we, we go, yeah. we pray over stuff. We pray worship music. Yeah. So my dad drove from Jacksonville, came up here. Now, right when we started to go into my office, when he got here on a Saturday, we're walking in. When my dad walked in the door, now this is a military man, a boxer, gold gloves, not a crying type. He starts to fall over and starts to bawl his eyes out because he <laughs> felt the presence of God. I, I was trying not to cry. The Holy Spirit told me, I'm about to heal your mom and dad and I'm gonna build their faith. That's exactly what he said. And I'm getting real emotional. We walk in, he had me put on an exact song. I put the song on, um, Holy Spirit by Jesus Culture. I play it, never heard of it in my life. My dad sits down and I put my hands on my dad's face and I said, Father God, in the name of Jesus. I asked him first, what do you need healing for, dad? He's weeping, he said, my eye. I said, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I'm standing on your word right now. Your word says that we can heal the sick, cast out devils and raise the dead. And I said, please heal my father in Jesus' name. Now he starts to shake and, and cry and Jesus baptized my dad in the Holy Spirit right there. He gets up. I sit down with my mom. My mom's crying. My wife's praying in tongues. She's crying. I look, I look at my mom and I say, Mom, repeat after me. I call out the spirit of anxiety. I call out the spirit of anxiety. I call out the spirit of fear. I call out the spirit of fear. I call out the spirit of oppression. I call out the spirit of oppression. And I cast it to the pits of hell. And I cast it to the pits of hell never to return. Jesus, heal my mom in Jesus' name. I baptize my mom in the Holy Ghost. She starts crying her eyes out. The Holy Spirit said, now look your mom in the eyes and say Jesus forgives her. I look my mom in the eye and say Jesus, Jesus forgives you. you. Mom, she goes, he, he does. does, he does. He does. And I just found out a few weeks ago, this is last week, that my mom held, was holding something for 40 years, 40 years. And I just found out that I had a completely different dad. He died of colon cancer. And I went last weekend and met my, 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 my brother and my sisters that I never even knew I had. Mm. You see Jesus, literally, my mom was gone. I seen her the other day, she's completely free. My dad, they sent me a text message, they go to the doctor the next day, the doctor says, your eye is healed. My father's eye is completely healed. You see, Jesus said that he left us to do greater things than he did. He healed the well, sick. How was your mom's depression? Gone. My mom is around glowing. My mom's oh, glowing like a... Okay, real quick. I need you to pray two things. The unfair advantage, yeah. and I need you to pray for whatever God tells you to pray for, and I believe every word coming out of his mouth is going to happen. Let every man be a liar, but God's word is true. I need you to make sure you're prepared for this prayer. I want you to repeat this prayer with me and mean it to the best of your ability out loud. Repeat after me. Dear God, Dear God I've made many mistakes, made many mistakes. And I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. I believe the blood of Jesus. I believe the blood of Jesus. Paid the price for all of my mistakes. Paid the price for all of my mistakes. And they're not just forgiven. And they're not just forgiven. They no longer exist. They no longer exist. I'm starting fresh. I'm starting fresh. And now that I'm starting fresh. Now that I'm starting fresh. Jesus, come and live inside of me. Jesus, come and live inside of me. I make you my savior. I make you my savior. And my Lord. And my Lord. Amen. Amen. Robbie, pray. Father God, Lord, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Father, I'm crying out to you right now, Father. <laughs> 
Father God, I pray that you, you get these people, you fill them and receive this unfair advantage annoying, Father God. I pray that people right now that have bad backs, cancer, anything, that you heal them in the name of Jesus Christ and Nazareth, Father. I plead the blood of Jesus over these people, Father. I'm crying out because your word says that we can do it, Lord. So I'm asking you right now, and I'm asking the people that are watching that you receive this anointing, that you walk in boldness, that you walk like Jesus did the same way he did, that you lay hands on people, you heal the sick, you raise the dead, and you and put this unfair advantage on everything in your life. Father God, I pray that someone's back is hurting and their, their neck is hurting, that immediately the pain is gone in the name of Jesus Christ. And that I feel someone's arm is hurting. Someone's got bad legs. Some people can't even walk. Someone's looking at this right now, weeping, and I'm saying them right now in the name of Jesus Christ, to Yeshua, shed blood, that you, you heal them, Father, in Jesus' name. And one more thing, people's fingers are being healed in Jesus' name. Walk in the unfair advantage.